Thumbs up. Yep. Thank you so much. So great, it's been a while since we've talked. We have a lot of exciting updates to share. This is our proposed agenda. Uh, first of all, team updates. So uh, since the last time we talked, we have onboarded two, two new team members, uh, Ramya and then Sanat. Uh, Ramya is from Amazon, PayPal, and also Freshworks. You may have seen these logos before. And Sanat uh, is previously from ThoughtWorks, which has a really good, um, uh, a well-known uh, community and knowledge around test automation and the test pyramid, and also the home of Martin Fowler. So we are very excited to have them on our team. This is the current roster. So now we have started uh, defining member specialties and stable counterparts to our teams. Um, our current new hires, Dan, Mark, Rami, and Sanat, are currently assigned to dev stage. And we still have two more uh, new hires that we are looking to assign to the off stage as well. Moving on, so updates on Q3 OKRs. OKRs, which is still in progress. So uh, implementing the review apps for CE and E, we're still tracking at 45%. There's uh, some challenges that I will highlight towards the end. But the implementation of the CE repo is almost done uh, with our environment cleanup policy. Uh, triaging and adding proper priorities and labels to bugs is roughly 80% done, which is, this is the area that we made the most progress on. I'll also be highlighting some of this in our charts uh, after this as well. Um, the a triage uh, me mechanism has been implemented. This includes GitLab bot mentioning and reminding people to triage their issues. We have also implemented a triage package that we will also show uh, later in, in, in the update as well. Uh, for sourcing and hiring wise, um, we're tracking 75%. Uh, we've sourced around 70, we've hired two, and we're working, looking to hire one more if we can make it in time by Q3. So other accomplishments. So uh, we've started an issue grooming assistant to tra track missed deliverables and missed, uh, mob, missed deliverables and also regressions and bugs, thanks to Genshin. You can see this in the form of GitLab bot uh, reminding people, hey, uh, if, if you added a regression label, make sure you add an affected regression label. If an uh, issue is marked as a deliverable and it's passed the milestone date, we will automatically mark it as a missed deliverable. And then we also track when, which milestone that has been missed as well. We're continuing to iterate on GitLab Insights dashboard. Uh, the current uh, accomplishments we have is we have now implemented team, top level team views and summary for each team. This is available for CE and E repos. So if you click the links here, you can also take a look at um, their dedicated views for create, manage, plan now and the metrics that belongs to those teams. We've also kickstarted implementing this feature inside GitLab itself. The, the, the kickoff meeting is available on YouTube. Thank you, Victor. And this is the first feature that we're going to implement uh, as, as part of GitLab. Moving on, uh, we've also implemented an automatic triage package. So if you are an engineering manager, you may have uh, received an email this morning that, hey, these are the list of like, top 15 issues that you should triage uh, for this week. Um, so th those are also our effort to scale triaging across the whole again, engineering organization. So for every week going forward, we'll be assigning a triage package for each team for them to uh, help us triage issues. And this is only 15 issues per week, and, that, and that's gonna scale across different teams. There's a sample of the driver and output here, thanks to Chen Shin. Uh, we have also set, set up a dedicated project for all things triage. So uh, if, you're looking to, uh, if you're looking to file a bug or also raise a feature requests, please visit this, this project. And we've also in initiated test planning process for new features, uh, thanks to Mark, Sana, and Ramya. So we've kickstarted with uh, this with 11.3. Uh, all the test plans for CE and EE are listed here, so feel free to take a qu a click and take a look. But we will continue to do this for 11.4 and also into the, the future. Moving on to things that are in progress. So we're still working on tracking our end-to-end -end test coverage. So this is our first step uh, as, uh, as a team to track all test coverage uh, in, in the end-to-end -end layer. This is gonna be the single source of truth to track this coverage. Um, the link is here. The second iteration of GitLab triage is well underway. So we've now proven that the label works. Uh, we're gonna, going forward, we're gonna apply the, 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 the version specific labels immediately. And then we'll ask people to correct them later. Uh, the rest are still in progress. So we'll still con continue to build out our environment specific CI. Um, everything is done except for production in Canary, and these are the projects that will run tests on production uh, uh, for functional mo monitoring. Uh, we're still working on transferring the ownership uh, of the GitHub queue runners from the distribution team and defining third party services and also speed up the tests to run in parallel. 
Next up, we're, look, we're gonna take a look at the engineering metrics, the state of bugs. So um, uh, we still have some open S1 in, in CE, but the good news is that we don't have any open S1s in, in CE, in, in, e, in EE. And the, the bugs uh, for this month is, is stable and trending down. We're doing better than the last time we did as far as the, the, the MRE factory event, but uh, it's still not the end of September yet. So this metric is still in progress. The links on the top are available for you to go and take a look as well. Moving on, uh, this is our progress to track tra uh, triaging, severity, and priority. Uh, the, these are the metrics for July. The blue ones are the untriaged ones or unsevertized ones. We're making good progress. Uh, the the, 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 the right-hand side is our current state. So we still have a lot more work to do but we've cleaned out uh, bugs that are uh, older than six months and now we're focused on focusing on the new ones that are uh, recently created or uh, it's, it's within the six month time frame. Moving on, uh, so I'm gonna let Mark uh, Fletcher take over here and just uh, do a showcase of what we implemented recently for our, our top, top level team views. Mark, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, thank you. So, um, yeah, we recently um, started importing the issues for CE and EE and uh, displaying these at a team level because we thought this would be useful for both tracking um, the severity and priority on bugs and then being able to break that down per team as well. But we do have the, uh, the overall percentage per project as well. But the other things we started displaying were things like uh, regressions per team and uh, the missed deliverables per team, because we thought that would also be useful. Um, but any suggestions for new graphs are really welcome, because we want these to be um, to be useful for uh, each team on the team level. So the other um, things that we're trying to implement because currently we do this per project but um, we know that some teams work across projects so they might work in GitLab Shell or they might work in um, GitLab Workhorse and obviously both CE and EE so we plan to combine these at a top level where teams can um, add the projects that they're interested in and then the graphs will be based off of that. Um, and the other things uh, for the team level is um, graphs representing technical debt and merge requests that have been merged um, per release. So we think those would be useful at the, um, at the team level too. And maybe um, the bugs that have been closed down. Um, so I'm gonna just read some questions as well. But any uh, other suggestions for team level or um, project level charts that you think would be useful, please raise an issue about that. So there's some questions. S1 still non-confidential. Yeah, um, so it's we don't actually track confidential issues in, um, in GitLab Insights. And then SIDS question, can we get merge merge requests per person for the whole company? Yeah, I expect we could do that at a, um, at a top level and we could include each project as well. We could do something about that. That'd be, that sounds useful. Yeah, the, the, it's really important that we keep shipping as a company. So we need to do it both. And, and by focusing on, on missed deliverables, a knee-jerk reaction might just be, hey, well, if it's bad to miss deliverables, I'm just going to promise less. And promising that you can always make your deliverables by just only promising 20% of what you're capable of. And work tends to fill the time that is available to it. So if it's, we should really make sure that that velocity, the number and that cycle time, and then the number number of features shipped is very prominent in any trade-off we make. Okay. Thank you, Sid. We'll take that to an issue and implement as you suggested. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, that's it from me, Matt. Thank you. And, and as always, the team is always open for suggestions. So please ping us in quality. And if you want to see any, any, anything in this charts and any feedback, it's more than welcomed. 
Uh, moving on, so we've also initiated the test planning process for CE and EE. So I'm going to turn it over to, to Mark Lapierre uh, to touch on the new test plan and test plan format that we have implemented. Mark? Thanks, Mac. Um, so yes, uh, as Mac mentioned, we started rolling out test plans as, uh, alongside development of 11.3. They're a place for focused discussion of quality and risk management, with the result being uh, test requirements or a summary of tests we expect to see across all levels of testing. Uh, there's links in the slide there to the discussion of the creation of the process and some links to actual test plans. Uh, next slide, please. So Writing test plans, um, it's easy to get bogged down in the detail of test plans and the results can be less than ideal, especially if there's too much focus on the details of the test, which is often at the expense of the value that the test provides. So we wanted something that was more efficient and produced better results. We've chosen the ACC framework, which was developed out of Google as part of an attempt to get uh, testers to write test plans in 10 minutes. Uh, now, from what I read, they didn't actually get there, that 10 minute limit, but when trying to do that, they identified um, aspects of, core aspects of e effective test plans. And those are attributes, the qualities that the product should have, components, the major parts of the product, and capabilities, which is the behavior that links components and attributes. Uh, there's an example there. And if you have a look at the bottom of the slide, there's a matrix which uh, aligns attributes and components. What you don't see is the capabilities at the intersection of attributes and components, but in laying it out like that, it encourages us to think about the product and what we're testing from different perspectives. And it leads us to quickly define uh, important aspects of the change to be tested in a way that focuses on the value that the change provides. So when we write tests, they're valuable tests. Um, and the capabilities that we come up with, they guide the construction of tests. They're high level descriptions of the behavior that uh, the test will verify. And the tests are intended to be at multiple levels, uh, unit integration system end to end. So in the example there, I've got a feature proposal, uh, a recent one, which was to allow comments on merge requests to be grouped together in batches. We want them to be reliable. So that's one of the attributes that it'll have. And the component, the major component of that feature is merge requests. And one of the capabilities of that, at that intersection, and there'll be many other capabilities at other intersections, this is just one of them, which is that uh, reviews are persisted for the user and not just for the browser or the session. And that leads to a few different test cases, some of which some unit tests will verify how persistence works. And end-to-end -end tests, there'll be one, for example, that uh, verifies that behavior across browser sessions. Uh, so that's it for the overview. The, the process is new. Uh, so if you have any questions or feedback, uh, please get in contact with the great, uh, with the um, quality team. Uh, and that's it for me. Back to you, Mac. Thank you, Mark. Moving on. So these are the top challenges that I'll open up for discussion as well. So the first challenge that we are seeing is the, the community marathon being picked up too late. Um, I've created an issue to discuss here below. And I think we need to define a better uh, process and also notification mechanism and also having people load balance where if, if somebody leaves on, on vacation, we, we know we have somebody that can take on that area and, and, and move these, these contributions around. Um, the second one on the list is, uh, so we have around 350 new issues every week posted to CE and EE. So that, that, that adds up to 1,500 issues each month. So we really need help with basic triaging and we've implemented triage mechanisms to find out to the rest of the engineering team. Um, there's an issue to discuss further here, but uh, bottom line is this is everybody's help. Like the quality team can't triage 1,100 issues per month, every month. Uh, we need to scale this out sustainably and horizontally towards uh, all of engineering. Uh, the third one here is, of course, this is, this is related to labels as well. Our metrics are only as accurate as our label hygiene. So we rely on, uh, on people to help us uh, ensure that the label is correct. If you're getting pinged by our GitLab bot, please help out. Um, 
Uh, number four, we currently have uh, some open S1 bucks, which is uh, roughly a month and two months old, which is fine. But, but I wanted to highlight we currently have four. So if you are the engineering manager that uh, has these bugs on your radar, please uh, work to resolve this in the time frame. We do not want this S1 issues to be lingering for too long. Uh, the last one, I think we have mitigated this some part, so we won't be able to deliver GitLab QA runs as part of review apps uh, implementation. And we're gonna pick up pick this up as part of our Q4 OKRs. We're also pinging uh, Marin's team and the distribution team to help us uh, move this forward and 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 deliver this as soon as we can. And with that, I will open it up to questions and discussions. And I'll highlight the two top concerns here from from the quality team. The floor is open. So the top concern here is um, community MRs are not, are not being picked up. Um, this has resulted in uh, some comments on Twitter. We have addressed the, the comment and uh, we have been transparent and showed him uh, we're working to address this, but I will welcome any, any suggestion here from the team uh, to address uh, this challenge. Uh, they, uh, we have an issue out there. This is Dan, by the way. We, they, we have an issue out there that uh, I believe is part of the issue triage repository regarding assigning any issue that's older than an amount of days to a, to a random developer or quality member. So uh, that's at least a start, I think, because um, that would be useful to have our bot, you know, give us random random people these issues so they don't fall by the wayside. So, Mac, uh, first of all, I think this is a great FGU with lots of links in it and, and good overview of the work. So, so well done, you and Mark, for, for, for such a great FGU. Um, I wonder a bit, the community merge request, do you think we need like more merge request coaches or do you think it's more healthy to have all of our developers from time to time participate in that and then do what uh, Daniel just suggested, assign it to someone? I think we both sit. I think I think merge request coach sometimes can be a single source of failure where somebody goes on vacation and we need to make sure we have more than one or even three people on one area. And then we would love to have other people also contribute. Like I think all of engineering, everybody can contribute and, and everybody in engineering should be a champion of that value. So um, I think rotating new members that haven't coached before, have them also participate in that, that will, also help them with their with their career path as well as they get to teach other people. I so David here. Uh, thanks, Mac, for raising this uh, this one. Uh, we had uh, I had some comments on the on the issue related to uh, on the one that you've pointed on the on the FU, um, and I think these are great ideas. I mean, I especially appreciate the fact that this shouldn't be. Uh, um, something that uh, that the quality team has to deal with um, I like the idea that th this uh, expanding this to the whole uh, engineering teams in the in the company um, I do have a question though I mean even if we expand the assign the assignments uh, to to other engineers um, how can we make sure that um, that still we have this regular cadence that the, the issues are, are picked up I mean everyone is uh, is busy and uh, but we want to make sure that we respond to the um, to, to this community request. At least, if it's just to say, "Hey, we've seen your uh, your your contribution. Uh, we appreciate it. We're going to work on it." Well, thanks, David. Yeah, we have we have some mechanism, and, and I think it's already linked in the issue. So, uh, I think it's it's currently at six months, right, Mark? Uh, I think we want to tighten it up to to a month, or even or even shorter than that. Where if there's an MR with no no activity on it, we would, we would pick it up and then, and then uh, notify the team. Yeah, we really need to uh, reduce that threshold there because um, by that time, it's either quite out of date or um, the community contributors forgotten about it. So yeah, we definitely need to reduce that. So John uh, has, a, has a comment, John May has a comment around using NLP. So we do have something that our contributors have suggested. I think if you click on the link, and I think uh, there is a project out there by a contributor that's using TensorFlow based on our issues that we already tried. He, I think he implemented like a machine learning service that can suggest issues. The team is currently working on it, and um, we would, we're, we're, working, we're looking to validate if this is accurate or not, but um, from our preliminary 
evaluation is roughly 70 percent accurate so that's also another venue that we can and pull this in and it's it's a commun community contribution which is even even better Are there any other more questions or discussions? Um, what's what's the average experience for people contributing to GitLab? I contribute to GitLab, but I've I've heard people rave about the experience. I I don't hear a lot of negative stories, but it sounds pretty dire if like you submit a merge request and you don't hear anything for a month. That's that's a that's a, a very bad experience. What what is what is the average experience for people? Uh, I don't think we have that number right off the bat. I think we should probably have some metrics around what are the average time to close um, for an MR that's not been submitted by our team. But the, the, the comment from, I think this is one of our, 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 um, our low lights is, I think the comment on, on Twitter wasn't really helpful. I think he, he created an MR and it was uh, close to two months that nobody looked at. And it's, it's, we actually added the labels, but I think some of our teams were on vacation, which is also why I said that we need more than one person make, looking at an, at an, an area. So it's, it's multiple things that, that needs to go in to help fix this. But um, for that uh, specific scenario, it was two months until, until the MR got picked up by somebody, which is- At good. GitLab, we always say like, product schedules the teams because we've, we've tried like where it's, <laughs> A boss is not always fun, but having multiple bosses is really bad. Like if you have product asking you this, and then you also need to take into account uh, helping community contributions, doing a refactor, et cetera. It, it shouldn't be the engineers that have to balance that. That's the problem of the product manager. Should we, should we involve product more in, they have to basically assign these community merger requests to the engineering team and say, look, this is going to be part of this, of this release, because otherwise we, we get this, this struggle. Like, what do I work on the the work that the product manager assigned to me of the, or the work that the quality team assigned to me or, or something else. Like we have to have a single person that, that weighs the priorities that knows, well, this month we got this super important customer thing happening. So oh, we, we can't, we have to delay two weeks, but next month, okay, it's, it's normal steady state. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that every, every merge request is picked up within a day. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think, I think that's great. Uh, is it okay if I also add to the handbook where in the list of prioritizations, we add shepherding community contributions as part of that, that list? Yes, I think that should be on there. To, I just refactored those prioritizations. It should be together with new features and refactors. This is something that the PMs have to take into account. Got it. I'll take up the, the change to the handbook and then I'll, I'll send it out for review. Thank you. So we have roughly seven minutes left. Uh, I'll ask around again if people have any more questions and discussions. Otherwise, uh, I'll end the call and then I'll see you on the team call. So if there's no more. Um, have a great rest of the day. Have a good evening where you are. I'll see you on the team call and see you the next time in the next FGU. Thank you. Yep.